Welcome to worship this Sunday morning. Wherever you find yourself this morning, you are welcome. We are gathered as we watch together, even though we are dispersed across our homes, even across the country. Um, we worship the risen and living Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Old and young, happy and sad, strong and weak, we seek your face. You are our light and our help. Named as Christians, taught and trusted, blessed and prayed for, we are in the world. We belong to God. We are not alone. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
And so let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you in this Easter season full of gratitude and praise for all that you are and all that you have done. Lord, lead us and guide us in our prayers as we bring everything that we are and everything that we can to you right now. Lord, help us in our prayers when we feel lost, when we feel that we are alone. Through our prayers and our worship, help us to know that we are not alone, that you are with us by the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord our God, you are the King of the universe, the one who set the stars in space and set this world spinning. You are worthy of all that we um, offer in praise and worship today. But Lord, we recognise that we are broken people, broken because of our own uh, doings, our own sinfulness. And so we ask your forgiveness for those things that we know we need to say sorry to you uh, for today. So let's just take a moment's silence to call to mind those things that we know we need to say sorry to God for this morning. Lord, in your mercy, you hear the words of our confession. Help us to know the truth of your cross. Help us to understand the words that Jesus himself spoke when he said, your sins are forgiven. May we truly know and understand those words and Lord help us to go from this place of repentance this place of turning away from our sin help us to lead better lives to lead lives that honor you and all that you've done for us God we praise you and we thank you for all that you have done for all that surrounds us let's just take a moment to say thank you to God for all that is blessing us at this time. Maybe you'd like to share that with those that you are with or simply just hold silence and give thanks to God for that which is good. And so we gather our prayers together with the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, I was having a conversation with Ralph earlier. Let's go see. Uh, what's with the bucket? Oh, um, oh, I'll explain later. Don't worry about 
about that. Hey, Raf, did you know that in Indonesia there's a church shaped like a chicken? A chicken? What? No, that's crazy. Is it true? Is it? Is it true? Is it? Is it? <laughs> it is actually really true. I know it sounds crazy, but it is true. Here's a picture of it. Jesus asks of us. Can you have faith? Sure can.
we're going to go to Barbara and Mike's house now for our reading and today's word. The reading this morning is from John chapter 20 verses 24 to 29 and is entitled Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas called Didymus was one of the twelve. He was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thanks be to God for his word to us. In our reading today, we heard about Thomas. And a lot of people call Thomas the doubter, but I don't know whether Thomas was. I think many of us would be in the same position as Thomas. Even today, we, uh, we're in the position like that. And many people in this country are over this virus. Many doubt that they'll get it or it will affect them. Thomas, well, we don't know quite why Thomas wasn't with the disciples on that resurrection morning, when, or resurrection day, when Jesus appeared to the disciples. The disciples themselves were fearful of what was going on around about them. So they'd locked themselves up in the, in the room where they'd had the last supper with Jesus and Jesus came to them. But as the reading tells us, Thomas was missing. Why was Thomas missing? Nothing tells us why. Perhaps he lived in Jerusalem or one of the villages nearby like Bethany or that, but he wasn't with them. But when Thomas came back to be with them, they told him all about Jesus being there. Well, Thomas, like many people, doubts. But I don't think it was doubt. I think it was fear. Fear of what had changed. I can remember a while ago, about 19, 1997, I think it was, I was rather fearful of flying. I'd uh, never flown long distance, just a short hop across the, to the Isles of Scilly. And here I was, I was going off on 14 journeys by aircraft. A few days before, I'd been given a book. Now, how many of us take a book of sermons to read on holiday? Well, I'd been intrigued by this book. It was by the Reverend Tom Wright, and I'd started to look through it, and I'd, I'd managed to read the first sermon before we'd set off. Whilst waiting for the plane to board, I actually read the second one. The time I got to sitting on the plane, I thought I'll get it out. I'd got other books to read, but I got it out and started to read the third one. Started down the page and I turned the page and there in front of me, printed in large letters, was the words, Jesus came to take away all fear. Thomas, I think, was fearful at that time because he didn't know where he was going and what was going to happen. Was Jesus back? Was he going to declare the new kingdom? Or was all things going to change? Well, to me, reading those words there in the book, it changed my whole time for that holiday and that flight. What had I to fear? If Jesus came to take away all fear, here I was. Off I went. No problem at all. If anything happened to the aircraft, I would be with Christ. If it didn't, I was going to have a wonderful time visiting places. But Thomas didn't know. He doubted that Jesus had actually managed to come in that room, but I think the depth of it was the fear that all things were going to change. 
Then the next week, this one week later, the disciples were there again. Thomas was with them. Jesus came to them again and immediately turned to Thomas and said, Thomas, reach out your hand. Our Bible doesn't tell us whether Thomas did, but Thomas knew it was Jesus straight away. A problem this, to this day is that people haven't seen Jesus. So are unable like Thomas to believe that this is the Christ, the Saviour. But I know that this Jesus that died on that cross to take away our sins and to reconcile us back to God, he lives. That fear was taken from me, not by anything physically around me, but by the fact that Jesus came to take away all fear. And many of us at this time are living in fear, fear that we might catch this virus, fear that we might not be able to cope with all the struggles and strains that are going on. But have no doubt, Jesus is there in amongst us. He's with us when we're at home. He's with those that have to go out to work. He's helping, guiding and strengthening us each and every day. And he will, because he told the disciples he was going to be with them. He gave them commission to go out into the world and take his word out. And this world needs that care and comfort that Jesus brings. I've seen it over the last few weeks whilst looking after Barbara. No fear, no panics, no nothing. But I'll let you into a secret now. I've reread that book again. And you know what? Those words aren't in it. It is not there. To this day, I can say, show you in a print off the computer the size of those words in quite bold type. So Jesus does come to us on difficult times. He comes to us when we are fearful, when we're afraid, when we're in difficulty, when we're in joy. Thomas, well, they call him the doubter, but I think it was fear, fear of the future. To us, Jesus comes, takes away all the fear that there is. The most words in the Bible together in one sentence, do not be afraid. And I say to you this day, do not be afraid. Turn to Jesus. Let him accompany you in your solitude, in your isolation. Let him accompany you in your work. And he will come with us when all this is over to reach out to a world that is going to need the church. A world that is changing. A world that we need to make fit to receive him back again. Amen. There is a
so we bring our prayers, our thoughts, our concerns, our fears before God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord our God, you are the holder of all things. You hold us in your hands and you hold our fears conquered through all that Jesus has done for us, through your perfect love for us. Lord, however, we bring them to you now in prayer. We take this time, just a few minutes, to bring before God not just our fears, but our concerns for others, the things that we know that we need God to do in this world. And so we plead and we ask and we pray. In faith and in trust, we bring our prayers before you, Lord our God, knowing that you, God, have conquered sin and death, that you have won the fight, that you, God, love us so much that you care about every single concern and worry on our hearts. And so in this faith, in this trust, and without fear, we hand all these things over to you, Lord, asking that you would have mercy. And so we pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
And so as we come to the end of our worship this morning, um, I just want to set you a little challenge, a little reminder to be listening and be attentive to the Holy Spirit this week and in the weeks to come. Uh, and so if, as you're just thinking around your uh, daily, whatever you're doing, um, and a name pops into your head, then, then let's, let's maybe think that that might be a little prompting from the Holy Spirit just to contact somebody Give them a call, write them a letter, send them a text or an email, whatever it is that you do. Um, because we are all in need of a communication and contact with other people. Uh, and it can be a long time between, t uh, between occasions where somebody phones uh, or you receive some uh, contacts like that. Uh, so just really encourage us all to be thinking, who can we just drop a note to or just drop a line to, whatever it is this week. And if you find yourself at home and you are on your own and you're particularly isolated and you think, but nobody's phoning me, then pick up the phone. Pick up the phone and phone somebody. Um, let us know. We can arrange for people to be contacting you on a daily basis if needs be. Um, if you want to give the office a, a call, leave a message on the answer phone. The number is 01630 655 957. Leave a message. Someone will be in touch. We don't want anyone to feel that they're, uh, they're missed out or left out and certainly not to be struggling because of loneliness at this time, which is one of the biggest uh, issues for us, isn't it, at the moment. Uh, I trust and hope that you are all well and uh, just ask God's blessing on us all in this uh, challenging situation, that we would find God's peace, that we would find uh, a lack of fear because we are having faith in our God, that we would find that the risen Christ is present with us wherever we are. So be blessed in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit as you go into your week. Amen.